Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I wanted to give you a top 10, kind of the 10 things I would instantly go and repurchase if like the worst of the worst ever happened and I lost all of my makeup. It could be maybe I'm traveling and I forget the suitcase that does has my makeup in it or it gets damaged and it's all gone or um, maybe I'm moving cross country and the box with my makeup does not arrive. But let's just say that a situation arises where I am without makeup. These are the 10 things I would buy first. Thank you for watching and thank you for being subscribed. I'm gonna start with a product that I didn't like the first time I tried it and I kinda let it sit for four or five months before I tried it again. But since I figured out how to use this, this has been my one go-to product. I even wear this on days when I'm not wearing any other makeup. And it's this little teeny tiny beauty here. This is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Magic Vanish. It's a color corrector. And you can see I love mine a lot because I've already hit pan and it's real smudgy and messy in here. But I will tell you, this helps to neutralize my dark circles. I mean, you can still see them. They're still there, but it brings them down to a level where it's not the first thing you see when you look at me. This is the lightest shade that Charlotte makes. It's the shade One Fair. This is the thing that I didn't know I needed. I've tried so many other correctors. Uh, they were too stiff. They were too dark. They um, made my under eyes look dry and crepey. This is emollient. It has a little bit of slip to it. It's close enough to my skin tone, but it does have enough peach in it, it's right here, that you can actually neutralize those darker colors. I've tried correctors that are a little bit lighter because someone told me, you're so fair, you need the lightest. No, 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 no. I need something with a peach tone to it, and this one here is beautiful, and it takes down just enough of this so that I, you can see me and not just my dark circles. I also use it on my hyperpigmentation spots. You could really build this up and get a ton of coverage from it, but I prefer a lighter look, especially as I get older. I find that my skin makeup doesn't sit the same way on it that it used to. So if I put too much on, it starts to settle in the crinkles and then it starts looking like a made up face where things are not the way they're supposed to be as opposed to just me, but in color. So this right here is the first thing I would get because I even use this on days I don't wear makeup. My favorite concealer, the one that I have been going to for the last several years, I just realized has been discontinued. So I had to think, okay, out of all the other concealers that I have, what would I reach for? And oddly enough, it's affordable and it's at the drugstore. This is from L'Oreal. This is the Age Perfect Radiant Concealer. I always forget what it's called. But this is the lightest shade. This is shade 200 Ivory. And I love the way this looks. It's the only coverage I'm wearing today other than the Charlotte Tilbury. And I feel like it, it really does perfect. My favorite thing about this concealer is that it stays where you put it. I wouldn't say that it's self-setting and, and eventually it does kind of migrate into the fine lines under my eyes. Every concealer, every foundation, everything I have does that. I'm 46, I have those lines. It's gonna happen. But this one, okay, most of the concealers, I'll swipe it on, I'll blend it out, I'll pick up a powder brush and my powder and right before I go do this, I'm like, wait, gotta tap it all out because it started to crinkle. This one doesn't do it. And that literally takes me like a minute and a half to apply, to blend out, to pick up the brush and powder. And at that point, 90 seconds later, I have to re-tap it out because stuff starts to migrate. The expressions I make on my face, the product shifts, not this. It's also, I would say, medium coverage. It's not light, it's not super like full coverage. It's just enough to give you a nice, level of coverage to tone down redness to cover some dark spots not completely because she's not full coverage like the name says it is radiant and so it gives my skin a healthy dewy not too dewy not greasy but a, a life-like look to it this is definitely the concealer i would pick up now if we're talking about one powder i have more than 20 powders probably more than 30 for being honest, I haven't counted. I've got a declutter coming up, we're gonna do that. But I was thinking the one that I habitually come back to over and over and over, and I have repurchased more than any other thing, and I am so glad it's a staple product in the line for this brand that I don't think it's gonna be discontinued anytime soon because that's my least favorite thing, is this. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. I love the shade Diffused Light. It has a slight yellow undertone to it. 
It's really, really, really fair. But the best thing about this is it has a little bit of luminosity to it. It ends up, you know, I can actually just pick it up on my finger and tap it underneath my eye for a little added brightness. I can use it on a brush. I use it all over my face. I can use it as a finishing powder. I can use it as a setting powder. It brings that extra level of brightness to my under eyes and it doesn't settle and make my under eyes look dry and crepey and age me by 10 years. Not all powders can work under my eyes. This is the one that I trust when I wanna make sure that first of all, it doesn't budge and that it doesn't end up looking dry and like the Crypt Keeper <laughs> in a couple of hours. I have been using this for probably the last 14 years, 13 or 14 years. I discovered it at a boutique such a long time ago and I have never been without. I have purchased multiple compacts of this shade. I think there's another shade that might work for me, but this is my tried and true. We're kind of moving into that area now where I feel like products have to start doing double duty. And this is one of those things that if I'm thinking about a bronzer, I'm looking for something that can not only bronze, but that's not so warm that if I needed it to do a little contouring, it can do that too, because sometimes I need a little, a little darkness, a little shade under here to, you know. I like to use bronzer in the crease of my eyelid. That's what I'm using this bronzer for today. And the one that fits all of those criteria, it's not too heavy, it's easy to blend, it is the right shade for bronzing, bronzing and contouring. Like I can use it for everything and I like it as an eyeshadow. This, this is like the only holy grail product for me from Benefit and it is Hula Light. This is the light, again, another product I've hit pan on. This is really kind of like that moment where I'm showing you, these are ones that I've had in my collection for a while and I keep coming back to. I know a lot of people love the original Hula. It's just too deep for me. When they came out with Hula Light, I tried it and I fell in love because it gives me a subtle bronze without being too much. It's not too warm. It's not too cool. It doesn't look gray. It's like the perfect color for my skin tone. And I feel like when it comes down to that, if you're gonna be using a bronzer in multiple ways, you have to find the one that works best for you. This is the one that works best for me, but I like how easy it is to blend. My only pet peeve is I hate this box packaging because sometimes it's hard to close, it's hard to get my brush in. I, I should just probably like pop the pan out, but I, if I put it in a magnetic palette, I'll probably never use it again. But leaving it like this, I know exactly what I'm reaching for every time I reach for this. But this has been a hero product for me for a long time. And I'm wearing it on my eyes, on my cheeks, right under here, around the hairline. This is all over the face today, and I love it. If we're talking about blushes, I was thinking about a blush that I'd had for a while. I've been in love with cream blushes in the last, I would say, six months. And I felt like, you know, six months has really not been such a terribly long time. Maybe my cream blush trend is gonna end in a year or so. And then I'm back to my tried and true powder blushes. What one blush that I've had for a long time that every time I wear makes me feel pretty. I never end up with clown cheeks. It's always just enough and not too much. What is that one blush? It's the M Cosmetics Heaven's Glow Baked Blush in the shade Magic Hour. I absolutely adore this shade. Now this is one that I have used on days where I'm wearing no bronzer, no highlight, just blush because it has, I don't know you can see, it has a subtle radiance and shine to it. I love that about this. And the shine is just a little bit pink. I don't know that you'll see it here, but it does kind of glow just a little pinky. So it has some dimension and it has some kind of interesting like, is that peach, is that pink? It's super, super pretty. I've used this on the eyes before when I want a little warmth. You know, I've got like that bronzer in the crease and I need just a little something more if I'm wearing this as blush. Sometimes I'll incorporate it into my eye look for a cohesive look without it being too monochromatic. This is a beautiful product and I love this so much. Now I did choose a highlight that I have purchased in the last three months but it's because I had been reaching for it nonstop. I was sure I was thinking I was gonna go for a liquid highlight, but this one, even though it's a powder highlight, it gives me options. And this is the reason I don't have an eyeshadow palette in here is because I've got this face palette from Danessa Myricks. This is the Lightworks palette, the highlighting palette uh, volume one, which is the lighter of the two that she has. But I'm wearing this as highlight today here. I'm also wearing this as all of the highlighty, shimmery, metallic shades I have on my eyes. This 
is a beautiful palette. I have used all of the shades in here except for this bronzy one on the face. Some of them can get a little deep, but now that we're getting into summer, I'm sure I can make it work, but I've used all of these on the eyes. It's absolutely beautiful. And my favorite thing about it is that you can really like build up the intensity if you really want something like that glows for days and you've got a lot of different options a pink, a white, a champagne, a bronze and you can mix these in any way you want but they are just absolutely glorious. So this is my multitasking. I can use it as eyeshadow with a little bit of bronzer, add in the blush if I want of a rosier look. Like I really can get a lot of options out of these things and I feel like I don't have to have eyeshadows if I have these guys because I can still get a variety of looks from this. But on the face, even though I'm 46, it doesn't look too heavy, it doesn't look too powdery. It is a little bit more blingy, but I love. Now I'm that person who does way too many steps. <laughs> I use sometimes two to three brow products. I'll use two, sometimes three different mascaras, primer, blah, 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 way too much. And I'll tell you, I was like, what is the one product for brows that I could see myself being happy with if I needed just one? And it would be this. This is from M Cosmetics. This is their Micro Fluff Brow Cream because the wand is so itty bitty. It's the tiniest thing ever. I love it so much. It has a tint, it has fibers. It creates the look of more brow hair. And it's the only product I have in my brows. I normally have pencil, this, and then I'll use like a brow marker to give me a couple of just random brow hairs where I don't have them. This can do it all. This is a great, great formula because the fibers in here attach to your hair and it gives you the look of more hair. So I tend to start out by back combing my brows, like all the way through here and then right at the front, I'll take it right here and kind of wiggle it through. Now that I'm doing this, I better make sure I end up even. But I'll start down here and just make sure that I get enough color where I want it. Super easy. And it gives it hold, but it's not too stiff. Okay, now that I've messed with them after I had them the way I wanted, I had to fix them. The only reason that I would be happy with just one product right now is because I've been using a brow serum in my brows and I feel like my hairs are coming in thicker, darker, and more hairs all together. So since my brows are a little more voluminous than they were say three to four months ago, I can safely get away with one tinted brow cream. I love mascara, but I have the weirdest lashes. My lashes are short, they're straight, and they point downwards. Out of all the mascaras I have tried, out of all the mascaras I own, which is the one mascara that builds on itself, doesn't clump too much, gives me length, gives me volume, and doesn't really budge throughout the day? Like, I don't want raccoon eyes, I don't want flaking, I don't want any of that. And I had to give it up to the Lancome Mr. Big. Mr. Big has always been my favorite mascara. I've always loved Lancome mascaras. I've tried all of them and there are very few that don't work for me. I think that Lancome makes excellent, excellent mascaras, but this one is great. It has more of a real fluffy wand um, and it, it's more of that traditional brush. So it's not that rubber bristle brush. It's super easy for me to get it on there. This is one where builds great on itself. You can use it as a primer and then again for a second and third coat to get volume, to get length, to get all the things that you want. In the heat of the summer, we're having like 110 plus degree weather today. This doesn't melt, it doesn't flake, it doesn't smudge. I don't end up with raccoon eyes. This is a fantastic, fantastic mascara. We're just down to lip products and there are two. I was like, where can I skimp and save in other areas? I won't pick a foundation. I won't pick a primer. I won't pick an eyeshadow primer. I, like I skipped a lot of different categories because I needed to have two lip products. The first one is the one that I'm wearing right now. This is Medieval by Lipstick Queen. It's a sheer red. This is the lipstick that I've had the longest love affair with. I picked a bullet of this up the same time that I picked my first compact of this up. I bought them at the same time, at the same boutique. And I will tell you, I have never been without this and I have never been without this. And I've probably gone through nine, maybe 10 bullets of this. And for somebody with as many lipsticks as I do, I have more than 200 to go through 
that many of this. It's the one that I constantly reach for all the time, all the time, all the time. I've spoken about this lipstick so many times on my channel. It is always in my like favorite reds or um, ones that I reach for in summertime or if you're looking for a red and you don't think you can wear one, try a sheer red and I suggest this. This is literally my favorite red lipstick. This is what it looks like swatched right here. You can see that it's sheer. It's absolutely lovely. It gives a little bit of glowy shine. It's hydrating. It's comfortable. I put it on like a lip balm. I have loved this for so long. I don't know there will come a time unless they discontinue it and please don't do that. This is literally the one thing out of my entire collection. I think that I purchased more than anything else over and over and over and over again. Such a beautiful product. And because I'm a girl who likes her lip options, this was my nude of choice. This is from Lisa Eldridge. This is the Velvet Muse lipstick. It's a little pinky. It's a little nudie. It's a little bit deeper, but it is absolutely gorgeous. So this is what this looks like on. This is definitely a My Lips But Better color. I always love a pinky leaning nude, and this is definitely one of those that has some kind of caramel tones to it, but just a little bit of mauve, just a little bit of pink, where it brings life and color to my skin tone. I absolutely love this. My favorite thing about the Lisa Eldridge formula is that it is hydrating, although it has a matte appearance, and it lasts really well throughout the day. I have so many, all the gold ones here are Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, it's literally my favorite formula. I, when I mean, it was hard for me to pick just one, but this is the one that I think that I would get the most use out of. This is also one that I have in the past blended out into blush. It's beautiful and it works really well for my skin tone. So these would be my two faves. Now I know this top 10 list is different for everybody. Some people really love foundation. Some people really love eyeliner. Some people strongly live in eyeshadow territory. And I don't have any of those things listed in this list today. I would love to know if you had to pull together a, here's my top 10, or maybe even here's my top five, what would be the first thing you would run and grab if you lost everything in your collection? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an incredible day and I will see you again soon.